College football is finally here, and we welcome in CBSSports.com's Dennis Dodd to talk about week one. And Dennis, the first marquee team that we're going to see is LSU. On Thursday, they play Mississippi State. What do you expect to see from that game? Well, I think this is going to be a game where people are looking to see how good LSU does. I don't think anybody out there expects this to be close, despite it being an SEC game. LSU going on the road. Uh, Mississippi State is woeful and has been pretty much since Sylvester Croom has been there. They're looking to see how Matt Flynn does in his first start in 20 months. If you remember, the LSU quarterback was, uh, last started the Peach Bowl, the 2005 Peach Bowl, uh, and stepped aside for Marcus Ru- to Marcus Russell. So I think that's what people want to see. They want to see if the number two team in, team in the nation is up to the hype. Um, and they want to see if they, if they can win it all. I expect a lot of LSU people to be there in, uh, in Starkville and, and get a read on that defense, which is supposed to be the best in the nation. Okay, so we know we have Matt Flynn at LSU, but a team with a big question mark at the quarterback position is Notre Dame. What's Charlie Weiss doing there? They take on Georgia Tech in week one. Who's going to be the quarterback? Yeah, a week ago we had four major quarterback battles raging, Florida State, Oklahoma, Miami, Florida, really five if you include Notre Dame. We're down to one. You know, and here we are, scant hours before the opener. We still don't know, really, have any idea who the starter is going to be at Notre Dame. And Charlie Weiss is playing this thing to the hilt. His reasoning with three inexperienced quarterbacks is not to give Georgia Tech a read on who's going to start. But but, but what's the point now? There is no there is no film of Evan Sharpley or Demetrius Jones or or, uh, or Jimmy Clausen. So he might as well go ahead and name the guy. And I, I, I think Jimmy Clausen's out of the mix, frankly, right now. I, he's not going to play Saturday, I don't believe, because of the bone chip operation and, and may not play at all this year. Okay, Dennis, and probably the biggest game of the first week is Cal versus Tennessee, two ranked teams, the only two ranked teams that play each other in this week. So what do you expect to see from that game? This is for, to me, this game is for each conference's manhood. Uh, you've got the fact that Cal – went into Tennessee in the opener last year, just absolutely laid down, humiliated themselves, humiliated the conference. It was 35-18, but believe me, it wasn't that close. Tennessee jumped all over them. So now you get the return game. It's a revenge game for Cal. Uh, Tennessee needs to get off to a big start, or the Wolves will be out for Phil Fulmer. But I think Cal players have been called out. I mean, that they did not stand up, and it, it brought about in Nalen Stadium every stereotype you've ever heard about the Pac-10. They're finesse guys. They're not tough enough. They wilt under pressure. That's basically what happened. Now, having said that, Cal went on to win 10 games and a share of the Pac-10 title, the only, the only school in that league in five years to even win a smidgen away from USC in the conference race. So I, I think in their own laid-back surfer boy way, this is a big-time revenge game for Cal, and I, I expect Cal to win. Okay, so in that game, you're going to have the Pac-10 trying to prove itself to the SEC. And let's talk a little bit about some SEC football here. You have the defending national champion Florida Gators taking on Western Kentucky in week one with Tim Tebow taking over the head position at quarterback. Is he going to be any good, Dennis? Yeah, I I think so. And I I think that's the biggest story of this game because Western Kentucky is a provisional 1A school that's going to join the Sun Belt in two years. So this isn't even a a question of competition, but I think everybody wants to see how Tim Tebow does as a starter. But let's, let's not forget he only has 33 career passes under his belt. Uh, he was the team's second leading rusher last year, mostly because he had to be. They didn't have a running game to speak of. And if you're a Florida fan, you'd really like to see them run the ball Saturday. Uh, they did not do it well last year. They had to kind of gimmick things up. I mean, we saw that with Percy Harvin and those, those uh, jet end of rounds, or whatever you want to call them, a lot during the season. Uh, he had that big long run in the and the national championship game, so they've got to get a running game going. They have the, you know, three of the best receivers in the country, uh, and Bubba Caldwell leading off that group. So, I, I I think it's more of a glorified scrimmage for Florida. You know, they're defending national champs. How are they going to be with Tebow? Okay, Dennis, but probably the biggest story in the SEC this week is the debut of Nick Saban as Alabama's head coach. What do you expect from that team this year? Do you, do you remember the spring game where it was uh, quote-unquote sold out? This is like a spring game where they charge admission. They're playing Western Carolina, who is a, a, a very down 1AA team, um, and, and Alabama will win. But I think it, it's more the curiosity factor. How, what has Nick Saban brought to the program? Uh, and frankly, it's been a lot. But they've had a lot of suspensions lately, a lot of off-field problems. All of that isn't going to help the fact that once they get into SEC play, their defense is really going to suffer. Nick told me during the 
during the summer that he, it, it, basically that it's undersized, and it's not a, up to his standards. I think it will be eventually. But I think this is a team to watch that, you know, once they get into SEC play, they might struggle because most of their returning talent is on offense. All right, thanks a lot, Dennis, and we look forward to hearing from you next week again. Keep your mouse clicking right here on CBSSports.com for everything you need to know in the world of sports. For Dennis Dodd, I'm Amber Wilson.